Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. Today we'll be taking a look at Darkside ransomware and investigating it in a TAS VM. As you can see, we've got the sample ready to go, but before that I want to talk a little bit about the incident since it's been all over the news, as it's been behind the massive cyber attack that led to the shutdown of the Colonial Pipeline system that affected 17 states so much they had to declare a state of emergency. Basically, if you went to the gas station, you wouldn't be able to get gas. It affected all petroleum products, even jet fuel. I cannot understate the impact that this threat has had in the last few days. So much so that the United States Preston had to make a statement about it. Don't panic, number one. I know seeing lines at the pumps or gas stations with no gas can be extremely stressful. But this is a temporary situation. The FBI and every intelligence agency has been scrambling to deal with this. Here's their official statements. And after several days, I believe they have finally managed to shut it down. Interestingly, the ransomware authors claim that they were not intending on doing the amount of damage that was caused, did not intend to shut down fuel supplies in 17 states. But again, these are people that on a regular basis, attack systems, and then ransom the data to blackmail people. So take the word for what you will. It's very likely that they backpedaled some of the claims after they noticed they had bitten off more than they could chew. And now that the intelligence agencies are putting a ton of resources and catching them, they're probably interested in just trying to disappear. They're like, oh, nothing to see here, guys. We're just some random criminals making a little bit of money. We're not important. Don't look at us. That's what this sounds like. But at the same time, I do know that a lot of ransomware do operate this uh, affiliate scheme where they essentially sell their ransomware builder or the base platform. Just franchise it. It's like McDonald's, but for ransomware. <laughs> so other criminals can also, you know, make their own variants, use it in their own attacks. So it's very much a 50-50 at this point as to whether or not you think that the hackers are being genuine when they say they didn't mean to create problems. But create problems they did, and we will see what kind of problems. Now FireEye have covered this in their threat research, and they did mention that DarkSide has been communicating actively with its ransomware as a service affiliates, other operators who are using the threat platform. And given their language, it does seem very much like they're trying to weasel out and hope for the least worst outcome now that all the law enforcement agencies are after them. But a little bit of background, this thing surfaced in August of 2020. If we take a look at the first whole sample itself, it's detected by 53 engines at the moment. But in a lot of cases, these threats are heavily encrypted or obfuscated when they're deployed and they're extracted in memory. So don't go by the Varstol detections. They're not necessarily representative of what the situation is on day one with any specific variant. But if we take a look at the graph, we can see a lot more about this threat. Now, like most traditional ransomware, it does call home to its CNCs, drops a lot of files, which is uh, interesting. There's a compressed parent, which is likely uh, the ransomware as service package that's commonly deployed in. Now let's go ahead and execute this threat on a test system. And while we do that, we'll also talk about what you can do to protect yourself. We'll also open up Process Explorer so you can see it in action, take a look at everything it does. Now I have seen some erratic behavior with this threat with regards to its encryption process. Sometimes it targets the network locations and uh, completely ignores the on-system directories. We'll see what happens in this case we should be able to notice the behavior either way. So here goes nothing. As you can see, it's now in memory, starting to take up some amount of CPU. We'll just see if it goes up over time. Now already we have a readme on the desktop. It's probably doing its encryption real fast this time. And now we have a brand new desktop background. As you can see, it says all of your files are encrypted. Find readme.txt and follow instructions. It's a pretty daunting message. And if we take a look at our documents and pictures, I'm pretty sure that they will be encrypted and they are. Also has this little lock icon that it uses next to all the encrypted files. So advanced GUI features with this ransomware. And, you know, we'll take a look at the readme note, which I think is quite hilarious as well. It says, welcome to DarkSide. And as you know, it's customary for every ransomware to have misspellings and grammar errors in the ransom notes. So 
You don't have to go very far with Darkseid to notice that. Very first sentence, what happened, Mrs. Ani? Your computers and servers are encrypted. Private data was downloaded. Very similar to a lot of the latest attacks we've been looking at. Um, same thing with Cyberpunk, with the ransomware that recently hit an Apple supplier. Not only do they encrypt the data on the disk, they also manage to send it to their CNC and use that for blackmail purposes. First of all, we have uploaded more than 300 GB data. <laughs> well, that's sketchy because I'm pretty sure they haven't uploaded 300 GB in like five seconds. Plus, I don't think there is 300 GB of data on this machine. So that's just a blanket statement, but I guess that's the upper limit of the amount of data they take. But here's the best part. What guarantees we value our reputation if we do not do our work and liabilities, nobody will pay us. This is not in our interests. All our decryption software is perfectly tested and will decrypt your data. We will also provide support in the case of problems. We guarantee to decrypt a file for free. Go to our site and contact us. See, these guys are professionals. They're offering you a service. <laughs> this language really reminds me of uh, spin-botting and boosting services in CSGO. It's really funny to see this kind of pseudo-professional approach from these cyber criminals. Actually reminds me of the Mafia back in the day, because they would also be like very polite and well-mannered in the way that they conduct their crimes. Rest of it is pretty standard. Asks you to download the Tor browser, go to their website on the Onion domain, and um, yeah, pay the ransom. So how can you protect yourself? Now, I think it's absolutely important to have behavioral protection on your main systems. In-memory forensics is also vital because in a lot of cases, what happens is the initial payload is extremely obfuscated. So it's missed by the scanners or the initial delivery mechanism just bypasses that. But even in this case, as you saw with the original process, once it gets into memory, it does unpack. So that's a point to consider. Firewall rules are effective to some extent because you can avoid them taking your data. But again, in the grand scheme of things, if this is able to cause 17 states to declare the state of emergency in the United States, I don't think that's an acceptable solution. Similarly, I hear a lot of talk about backups. Definitely back up your data as much as you can, but it's not enough to just do a backup for the heck of doing a backup. It's important, especially as an organization, to understand your recovery process. What is at stake? How much time is it going to take? And what is the cost going to be? Because in a lot of cases, what people find out after they're hit by these attacks is like, yeah, they have backups, but what it will cost them in terms of downtime, in terms of admin costs, in terms of the chaos and dysfunction that would be caused by the incident compounding over days and weeks, often it's more expensive even to go the backup route. So I strongly believe that prevention is important. I know there are a lot of people who watch the channel who have the opinion that you can't really get infected unless you go to quote unquote shady websites or something of that sort. If you're an everyday user, you may feel that that's the way it works, but on a broader scale, that's not where cybersecurity is at. These are high stake operations and the security of key systems is absolutely paramount. The impact that threats like these can have is going up every day as we rely on more and more on digital systems. Cybersecurity is not getting easier. And the most challenging thing as a large organization is the larger and more complex you are, the bigger of a target you are for cyber criminals. But at the same time, it's much harder to get your cybersecurity sorted because you may have the best in class security for your servers or for certain part of your systems. But again, you're only as secure as the weakest link. So when you have hundreds of uh, offices all over the place, users of all different levels being involved in your organization, all it takes is that one weak link, that one employee who shares their password, that one case of human error, and the entire thing comes crumbling down. So just keep in mind that attacks like this are a reality and just be prepared, right? Have a strategy and understand what it's going to take in each scenario. Once you get hit by ransomware, it is not pretty. Your options are very limited. In most cases, organizations end up paying the ransom and you also end up paying a huge middleman fee for the organization that negotiates on their behalf. It's a legal nightmare. 
and I think it's worth avoiding at all costs. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and share it if you did. It's really important to get this information out there to as many people as possible. If you're a business and you'd like to work with us to test your own systems, feel free to get in touch at thepcsecuritychannel.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the PC Security Channel. And if you're new, check out our entire video playlist because we've created a lot of free information for you to help protect yourself. We pretty much go through every solution on the market and show you how they deal with different types of threats. All of that information is available for free. Just check out the video catalog on the PC Security channel. This is Leo. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.